Camera action. A film crew took over the dome this week to shoot scenes from Little Big League. If they were filming today, they would rename the movie Street Fight. It's a street fight any time we go against them. Yeah, it was a street fight, you know. Dick Butkus would have been proud to do battle in today's game. Ohio State, Michigan type of game, early 70s. And like I say, kind of have a, had a flavor of the old, uh, you know, bear Viking matchup uh, minus Dick on the sideline. By the way, now that Mike Dick has gone to NBC, does that make him their intellectual property? He's intellectual, not our property, but on our set. Jim McMahon is back. You know, whatever's going through his mind is going through his mind. He can talk for himself, so. He most certainly can, and so can ageless wonder Tim Irwin. He has the word on the running game. And maybe we can get Tim to take dance lessons from John Randall. <laughs> Twenty teams in the NFL who are probably no better or worse than the next guy. Dallas is 0-2. Washington loses at home to Phoenix. The Packers blow a lead and lose at home to Philadelphia. Detroit is taken into overtime in New England. Miami loses at home to the Jets and the lonely Rams shut out Pittsburgh. Yes, good luck in the office pool. Well, the Vikings hadn't lost their first two games of the season since Les What's-His-Name in 1984. It could have happened today. In a violent chess game, the Vikings ended up making the right moves when it counted. In Jim McMahon's first start against a team which gave him an identity and a championship, McMahon left the dome with some fond memories of victory and some stitches. The atmosphere on the field before the game was friendly as Jim McMahon caught up with some of the old gang. After the whistle, the old gang was trying to catch him. Richard Dent even extended his hand to his old pal. Four times McMahon was reminded why some still call this the black and blue division. However, McMahon came out ahead and in the peak. Some of his old guards still respect number nine. I'm just happy he's playing, he's, you know. He's got the ability and it's good to see him a chance. Some of the young guns could care less. You know, the incentive is to win the game, you know, no matter who's quarterbacking, you know. If, uh, my mother was quarterbacking, you know, we still want to win the game. But no matter what happens in those 60 minutes, there are some things that last a lifetime. You spend a lot of years with, uh, you know, certain players, and, and you have close friendships with them and their family, so uh, uh, you like to see them all do good. You just don't want to see them too, too good when you play them, and, uh, you know, he had a good game today. Yes, Jim McMahon had a good game today, and Jim, for good reason, you downplayed your first start against the Bears all week. And uh, you know, now that this week is over, was it really just another game, and in a sense, how could it have been? Well, it's, it was definitely a must-win for us because it was a division game, and, and uh, we didn't want to go 0-2. Uh, it makes it a heck of a lot easier going back home to Chicago after the end of the season, that's for sure. Beyond the personalities, uh, you talked to Kevin Butler, a good friend of yours, Keith Van Horn. Some of yours probably not such good friends, like Jim Harbaugh, the guy upstairs, Mike McCaskey. Did you allow yourself to think about those relationships after the game today? Well, after the game, I, I talked to the people I played against, and, and Kevin, and uh, I saw McMichael and Dent. I was disappointed I didn't get to see uh, Van Horn and, and Bortzi and, and uh, some of the guys in the offensive line, because they, they're still really good friends of mine. Did you allow yourself to think what would have happened had you guys stuck together? Had they allowed you to stick together with the team that you had in 85, with the talent you had? Well, I think, you know, we were a lot like Dallas last year. We were the youngest team in the league the year we won it, and then... Uh, you know, I think that's why they, they got rid of me a couple seasons later because I wrote the book and said, this is what's going to happen, and, and it did. And that's, I think, what really bothered the owner is that I, I knew they were not going to pay the people that, uh, that they needed to pay. It's happening maybe again in Dallas, as you mentioned. Yeah. Look at your numbers today. Uh, 23 out of 29 for 179 yards, no interceptions. Uh, given the straight fight approach of this game, do those numbers reflect the way you played today? No, I don't think they do. I, I mean, I was surprised at the numbers myself at the end of the game. Uh, I made a couple of mistakes. Uh, I guess they got on Chuck Evans a little bit on the fumble play. That was my fault. And I heard that the Fouts, I guess, uh, was sticking up for me being an old quarterback. But uh, I, I turned the wrong way, and that was my fault. And another time I tried to give it to him. It wasn't supposed to go to him. It was supposed to go to Cadre on the end of round. And uh, I saw I made some mental mistakes today that I wasn't uh, too happy with. But... Uh, I'm just very happy we won the game. That, that was all that counts. Your, your friend Kevin Butler came inches away from making a 53-yard field goal in the second quarter. Butler could have given the Bears a 10-0 lead. Instead, the oblong ball was just short and bounced off the crossbar. Butler's spirit was deflated because he said the ball was deflated. 
If I'd had a legal ball in there, I would have made it. I mean, the ball was removed right after the kick uh, because it was uh, didn't have any, barely any air in it. I mean, uh, you can't kick a ball that far when the, the referees didn't check it. Maybe they, they came up and told me right after they removed that ball from the game. So maybe it was a conspiracy at the Dome today, yet Harry Newsom, the Vikings punter, also complained in the locker room. As you know, Jim was standing a few feet away from me. He said in one of his first punts, the ball didn't have enough air in it. That Did you notice been, anything? That might have been the same ball that Kevin kicked, because Harry said that uh, one of the balls uh, was very, very flat, and, and uh, it's, it's amazing that the refs get the ball from the sidelines and can't tell that. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> they got too many other things to worry about, I guess. Multi-million dollar business. Well, let's get into what produced the Vikings only touched on of the day. They're go-ahead one in the fourth quarter. Now, by now, the field had uh, tipped in the Vikings' favor in the team's of field position, and it was really all Minnesota. Harry Newsom had four punts of 50 yards or more. Now, here is the key one, Jim, as you know. Rookie Rod Carpenter downing it at the one, giving the team a real emotional lift. Okay, Harry's, uh, Harry's one of the best kickers in the league, and he has been for years. And, uh, this was a big play to, to get the Bears backed up in the end zone, and, and we needed it at that point. Very word on the screen pass. Maybe your bread and butter play today. Well, everybody talked about how he could run, but nobody said he, they said he couldn't catch the ball. But I, all I've seen in practice is him making catches, and, and once he gets the ball, he really knows what to do with it. But here's the touchdown to Chris Carter. Did the Bears get a little confused in their coverage here, you think? Well, we ran that play a few times before, and I kept hitting Anthony Carter out on the outside lane. And, and at this, uh, this time, they ran the safety out underneath him. And Chris, uh, Chris really broke his route. He's supposed to run a 12-yard comeback. And, and once he beat his guy, he did the smart thing and got in the end zone. And, and I was able to find him there. Looks like you bought yourself about as much time as possible as well. Is that well, tough to do today? Well, uh, you know, there's, you're going to have breakdowns. It happens, it happens to everybody. And uh, it's a little disappointing. But, uh, you know, everybody's out there working hard. And I can't, uh, I can't complain. Uh, we won the game. And, and uh, I'm still walking. So <laughs> I'm happy about it. I know any quarterback would love to go downfield maybe more in a game. Was it possible to do so given the Bears' coverage this afternoon? Well, they... They, they actually tried to take away our deep balls, and, and it, it surprised me a little bit because we didn't throw any deep balls last week except the one to Cadre mm -hmm. uh, that I overthrew, and, and uh, they played a lot of two deep, or not a lot, but uh, quite a bit of two deep when we did have passes called, and uh, they just uh, gave me the underneath stuff, and that's what I took. I noticed, uh, you know, you didn't have any delay of games today, the situation where it almost came down the last second many times with the new 40-second clock. That could be a, a potential problem down the road. Well, as much as we uh, substitute on offense, uh, it's, it's been a big problem for us, you know, throughout the preseason and uh, the first two games of, of this season. You know, they, we got to get the plays in a little quicker. When you guys that are, uh, you know, the players that are switching positions, they got to get in and out, and then we got to, you know, uh, press the huddle, as they like to say. And uh, but luckily, we can get the ball off. Your jaw's working just fine, by the way. So far, so yeah, good. It's starting to swell. <laughs> You're going to enjoy this one. You know, it's taken a while for Viking fans to get used to actually cheering for this guy. They love to hate him, of course, when he's with the Bears. But that's the beauty of free agency is it finally exists in the NFL. There's a lot of player movement. And the image of McMahon with the 85 Bears is as strong, perhaps, as the one of Butkus with the Bears in the 60s and 70s. And Hall of Fame middle linebacker did Butkus is the Bears, really, now broadcasting in Chicago. Uh, Butkus, who used to eat quarterbacks <laughs> for lunch, Gave McMahon a thumbs up for his style. You know, everybody talks about him being injured and everything else, and you know, and he gets hurt, but you know, you see the shots that he takes, and uh, you know, he had a heck of a record when he started as far as uh, getting wins. So, yeah, I think uh, kind of like what's a linebacker playing quarterback mentality. He's a tough guy. Those may be the nicest words ever uttered by Dick Buckus about an offensive player, Jim. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to play against him. I've seen all the old films, and uh, I've watched, uh, you know, I've watched him play. And he's he's a very intense man, and he was a he's a heck of a football player. He still is on the sideline. You sort of gingerly walk up to the guy. May I have an interview, please, Mr. Buckus? <laughs> well, don't touch that dial. We have more insightful excitement. <laughs> Good on him. Well, welcome back. Throughout this season, we are going to be hearing from the always candid Tim Irwin, who, when not practicing law in Tennessee, is playing right tackle for the Vikings. He's been doing this for 13 falls now and certainly has those hands to prove it. Uh, Tim, welcome to the show. And I know a week ago you were talking about the offensive breakdowns. You pointed at yourself. i got to improve my own play. Give us a capsulized view on how the offensive line did today. Well, you know, I haven't seen the film. You've got to qualify your remarks, first of all, because things are never as bad as they seem. Or as good as they seem you when you look at it. like an attorney already. Well, that's the truth. I mean, ask Jim. <laughs> there were some breakdowns after the day. We don't like to see our guy get hit. He doesn't like to be hit. we got to get better. We've got a young group that's making progress. 
We just got to speed the progress up. You know, you are really the only one who can give us the, the real insight because everyone has an opinion about the offensive line, yet no one really can qualify it because we don't know what the heck is going on when we watch you guys play. If it's good or bad, you can usually tell maybe if it's blatant. But with the young guys, three new guys, is it almost like a team within a team for that kind of progress that you have to make? Yeah, I think that's I think that's an accurate statement. It is a team within a team, and we're really the only ones that know how we're doing. Uh, our coach and us. And Jim feels the results, <laughs> you know, good or bad, he feels the results, but we're really the only ones that know what's going on up there, uh, what happened on the twist, mm -hmm. who got beat, who should have been helping out someone else, and you have to uh, spend a lot of time together on the football field, that's the only way to get it, and we just got to have more time and improve faster. Well, the Vikings managed just uh, 60 yards on the ground uh, last week against the L.A. Raiders. Barry Word watched that game from the sidelines. Today, he made the most impressive debut for a Viking back since, well, since Herschel. The Vikings quickly turned Barry Word from spectator to active participant. Word didn't play it down in the preseason before his trade to the Vikings. So much for the preseason. Pounding behind a more determined offensive line, Wood gave the Vikings an inside force they so desperately needed. 24 carries for 94 yards. Wood knew he would play, but this much? I'm surprised that, that my role was as big as it was, but, you know, I'm a football player. I've played for a few years now, and when I go out and play, you know, I'm giving it all I have. You know, I don't, I don't expect them, you know, to take it easy on me or anything like that. If they put me on the field, then i got to make something happen. The inside rap on Word was that he was a one-dimensional player, strong runner, but hands of stone. Well, he caught five passes for 58 yards. So what about that can't catch the ball rap, Barry? Well, I don't know who put out that, that rumor, but hey, surprise, surprise. The Vikings were duly impressed. But what's the word on Barry from the Bears camp? He got a couple plays here and there. Basically, we shut him down. <clears throat> Excuse me, Alonzo, Alonzo Spellman, I don't know if he was playing the same game today as Barry Ward, he kind of shut him down, but <laughs> what were your thoughts and impressions of Barry Ward today, Tim Irwin? I was glad to have him around. I thought, I do, I do think he made a lot of yardage on his own. Uh, he hit the holes that were there, and the screen pass was huge. It was a big, big play in the game, maybe the biggest. Jim, how close do you like to get to your offensive linemen uh, as your best buddies on the football team? Well, I, I've said it many times in the past, uh, you know, I can't do my job without these guys, and and uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of humor in the group. There's there's some funny people uh, that play offensive line. He's the only quarterback we've ever had here that sits with the offensive lineman in the meeting. I mean, he sits back there in our corner with us. I don't know if that's because he wants to get away from the offensive coordinator <laughs> or he wants to sit with us. But well, they got that back wall. You can lean your head on. <laughs> Take a little nap, and they don't know it. That's right. Well, loss of Terry Allen certainly uh, has devastated the Vikings at the outset. But Barry Ward looks like he's going to be able to make up some of that yardage for Minnesota. And how about a word? For the Viking defense, Dennis Green said it was spectacular really from the second quarter on. The Bears were forced to punt eight times today, which bears out that stat. Last week, the Vikings had trouble with a very physical L.A. Raider front line. They picked up their intensity as the game wore on. John Randall had two sacks of Jim Harbaugh. Yet Chicago was playing turnover free ball until late in the game when a big rush by Chris Dolman forced Harbaugh to throw it up for grabs. Audrey McMillan makes a diving interception. It was a painful win. Just ask veteran defensive back Carl Lee. You know, and I had said it during the week. I mean, one thing about the Bears, you throw away the stats, you throw, about, you throw away the records, you just go out and you play, and you know they're going to be physical, and, and you're not going to come in here feeling good when it's over. I mean, you want to celebrate. I mean, I'd love to jump up and down. I just don't have it in me. They're, you know, they're a very physical team. Uh, we feel like we're a very physical team, and it's, it's, it's kind of like a, two men trying to prove, prove a point. You know, it's a macho thing, and we want to hit as hard as they're hitting, or we want them to catch up with us. I mean, we just, you just go out and you just battle, and that's, that's really what it was. It's just a war. You guys might be dragging a little bit tonight, 70 offensive plays, but it's a good feeling, at least I know if you talk to the defensive guys, you kept them off the field a long time today. Yeah, but when they were on the field, they got the job done. They kept themselves off the field. A lot of three and outs out there today, and you got to take their hats off to the guys. When we win a football game, we only score 10 points, and really, we got a hand in giving them the seven they got. Yeah, that's, that's for sure, the, the fumble by Roger Craig. Well, let's, uh, let's face it, 10 points isn't going to win a lot of games in the National Football League, and that in two weeks we'll probably find that out. You know, if you read the paper this morning, this week, several Vikings complained about the sterile atmosphere in the Metrodome. Well, a point was made about the lack of fan spirit and poor music selection. Well, the noise level was high at times today. In fact, some players told me it was better overall. Even the music was updated as loud as it was. 
However, the music volume is still a little ear shattering and artificial cheers boom from the speakers. Todd Scott would like to see and hear more fanaticism. We want the Metro to be a place that teams hate to come in and play. So you know what? I want the people to stop wearing their suits to the game and all that. Put on some jerseys, some jeans, and come here and let's have some fun. Because we're out there having fun. We're not robots out there playing. And, and when the crowd gets into it, that gets us going. Tim, you've been outspoken about the crowd reaction in the past. Is it, was it better today? Is it healthy? I thought, I thought it was. I thought a couple of things. They were noisier and into the football game, which was great. I was real proud of them. Uh, they did not cheer when we had the ball. They quietened down when we raised our hands. That was huge. No way when we were on offense, one of my old gripes. And we could hear out there, and the Bears, I don't think, could for part of the time anyway. I was real proud of the way our fans reacted. They did a great job. Jim, you've been around the horn of the National Football League. The Viking fans have been accused of sitting on their hands a lot. Uh, did it help you today? Well, I know when I used to come in here, they were they were they would get pretty loud at times, and we, and then we uh, always talked about that, trying to take them out of the game because if, if we got up early, then they they did seem to just sit there and just kind of you know wanted to hurry up and get the game over. Take a nap and go home. Well, the Vikings had at least something to cheer about today, and their fans did as well. Tim Irwin, thanks so much for stopping by after a victory, but it seems like we always have you on after a loss. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, we'll see you <laughs> later in the season as well. Jim and I will be back to answer your phone calls in just a minute, so stay with us. Let's get right to our phone calls, and we're going to go right now to Tom with a question. Tom, how are you this evening? I'm real good, thanks. Go right ahead for Jim McMahon. I have a question for Jim as to what made uh, AC so much more accessible today as opposed to Chris Carter uh, more of lately. Well, I think uh, because Chris caught seven balls last week, uh, they really wanted to try to take him away a little bit, and that left Anthony one-on-one -on -one in the outside lane, and, and uh, as everybody saw today, he can still play a lot of football. He, he made a heck of a catch on the sideline. Well, you bring it up. Let's show it because it was one of the great catches. Maybe Anthony Carter does this as well as anyone in football because he brought he brought the uh, Vikings a big first down here, Jimmy, uh, with a tightrope back on the sidelines. Well, this actually was a nasty throw, but uh, <laughs> he goes up and, and uh, you know, he knew right where he was and he kept his feet in bounds and that was, a, that was a big play for us. Big play led to a field goal for the Vikings as well. Uh, Dwayne, you have a question for Jim McMahon. Go ahead. Yeah, hi, Mr. And uh, I'd like to know when the first time Richard Dent got on you, you guys talked a little bit. I had noticed that. What did he say to you? <laughs> I don't, I don't really remember what he said. I was just trying to get him off me. You know, Richard's a, a big man, and he weighs a little bit uh, more than I do, so um, I, I really don't remember his comments. I was just saying, hey, Rich, get off me now. The play's over. Trace Armstrong's the one that got the flag and got, gave you the stitches tonight, right? And right. Why you're right. He's taking too, uh, popping pretty good. Yeah, he got you good. All right, let's go to uh, Brad. You have a question for us. Go right ahead. Yeah, I realize that. Uh, louder Malcolm and Morgana, but what is it going to take for uh, Lindsay to adjust for you to uh, keep protection? Well, I think he's just got to keep working hard, and uh, you know he's uh, he's going to be a good football player in this league. He's, he's he's young, and he's played against two of the best pass rushers in the league the last two weeks. Uh, you know he's he's really uh, you know he's just going to keep fighting and scratching, and, and hopefully uh, he'll, he'll he'll get it done. I'm trying to give him some help over that side as well with uh, Steve Jordan, and Mike Tice occasionally. Jordan did catch one ball today, but he's probably just as valuable inside helping you block right now as anything else. Well, that's that's not uh, really what we need Steve Jordan to do. I mean, he's one of the best uh, uh, catching tight ends in the league, and he has been for years. And and uh, I'd like to get him more involved in the pass offense rather than the blocking part of it. You'd get the exact same quote from uh, Steve Jordan as well. Let's go to uh, James. You have a question for us. Yeah. How you doing, Jim? Good. Uh, I just want to know what you think about. Uh, Word. Have you heard the word? <laughs> I saw the word today. And I, uh, really <laughs> liked, I really liked what I saw. He uh, he ran the football extremely well. He caught the football well. And, uh, you know, he's going to be a, a, a real big asset to this offense. The amazing thing, you said he got a little tired down the game. We talked about he didn't play one play in the preseason. That's, that's still pretty amazing stamina for a guy who hadn't seen a snap all preseason. Well, he's uh, and, and he's a big man, too. So it's it was it was tough on him today. I'm sure that I haven't run a little bit uh, this this week off to try to get him in a little better shape. Was it a lot having this week off already? Yeah, it is kind of strange to have a, a bye this early in the season. I'd like to have him, you know, around week 10 or 11, you know, and, and you give yourself time to heal for the stretch run. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just have to take advantage of it. Well, you get one more, I think, right before you go to Chicago, so that'll be good timing for you. Stay healthy. You have a good week, Jim. All right, thanks. Appreciate it. Jim McMahon with us tonight. While the Vikings take a break next Sunday, we'll be back. We'll, we never rest, do we? Next Sunday, we'll be joined by Dave Winfield. Really looking forward to this. We'll likely reach the 3,000-hit milestone this week in the Dome. He'll be with us next Sunday night. And we can miss Carlos Jake. Carl Jenkins has spent his night off by being on our show. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this.
Picture of the week in the St. Paul Saints march to the Northern League title, Calvin Griffith, of all people, was given the honor of throwing out the first ball. Calvin, well, nearly got it to home plate. An outsider now of the Twins organization, Calvin is in pretty good health these days, looking pretty sharp, Calvin. In fact, he was as ornery as ever, discussing those multi-million dollar players. What a night for the St. Paul Saints. Well, we're going to close tonight's show once again with uh, closing music, local music provided by the precise percussive sounds of Savage Oral Hotbed. Thanks for watching tonight. We'll see you again next Sunday night with Dave Winfield and Carlos Jenkins. Good night, everyone. are coming this fall to MSC. See Jim Wacker's rejuvenated gophers on the gridiron this year.